teach today, we will have four readers in this order, Zoe Saunders, Kimon Nair, Sebastian Davis, and Hanif Lalo. Yes, please welcome them. <laughs> everyone. I'm here to talk to you about faith. So they say that faith is a, is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. And they say that faith without works is dead and so on and so forth. In fact, there are so many things that they say about faith. Now I'm not even going to bother to list here, but I'm going to give you a formal definition. So, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, faith, noun, a strong belief or trust. Now, I believe that is a gross oversimplification of what faith truly is. To give you an example, I'm not going to go into a serious anecdote about some catastrophic event in my life, but rather, I'm going to give you a scenario that I'm sure we've all encountered, which is exams. <laughs> In particular, my CSEC exams, or CXC or O-levels, whichever one you better identify with. They were a very stressful time in my life. And I was faced with what at the time was the most important external exams I would ever have to do. And that they were going to be a determinant of my future, et cetera, et cetera. So I had to do all these SBAs and try and complete my syllabuses and time was just running out and everything was just going haywire. By April, it was like everybody was just scrambling to get things done, both the teachers and the students. And it just seemed like there was not enough time for anything. I mean, I had nine subjects. Well, I had SBAs for nine subjects. I had picked up a 10th subject in December for God knows what reason. Yeah. <laughs> On a side note, I actually found out later that my colleges were more preoccupied with my Cape grades or my A-levels than the CXEs. But I digress. A long story short, despite all the worrying late nights burning the midnight oil, the endless pressure from the teachers and my mom to study and to work. Finally, I came out with 10 distinctions. <laughs> Which is great, and I could have easily attributed it to my hard work. <coughs> yeah, no. Mm. You see, during that period, I'd also come into sort of great realization that it's not just about me, but that the spirit is working through me and had been working alongside me and through me throughout the whole period. I'd actually had a sort of great awakening during that time and my faith really became like a big deal for me. I began to realize that faith was not just about belief, like believing like oh, there's this higher power that is there to help us and guide us along the paths of life. But rather, there's a spirit that permeates within everything, all of us, each and every one of us. And it's constantly there, just guiding us. No, more than that, living through us each and every day. And it was only through faith that I was able to realize that. So, in saying this, what I'm trying to say is that faith is more than just a belief. It is a door through which it, it just opens up a whole new world of possibilities. Faith truly opened my eyes to see what truly can be. So, I have some advice. Whenever you feel like the world is crashing down on you or that things just aren't going right or you, you just can't do anymore. Have faith. Remember that it's not just you and that there is a higher power, a spirit that is constantly working through you and through everyone and is only preoccupied with your good. 
Thank you. Good morning, everyone. When I used to share a room with my brother, we each had a twin bed. Above the beds hung two plaques, belief and faith. Each had its own definition. The one for faith said, faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you do not see. It's the plaque. <laughs> This is the definition I have lived by all my life. <laughs> if you have faith in something, you are admitting that you trust something to be true without absolute knowledge. Let's take the example of gravity. I believe that wherever I am in the world, if I drop something, it will fall. I do not have absolute knowledge, knowledge of this, but I have faith that it will. I have learned that you can make use of this principle in your life. Take me for example. I have been swimming from the early age of three years old. Three years old. This led me into competitive swimming. Making the national swim team would naturally be my goal. Every year I go through the same routine of trying to be balanced with swimming and school and never making the team. This year, I took a leap of faith. I nervously requested from my parents to shift the focus from school to swimming. <laughs> this would mean stop extra classes to put more time into swimming and also put off taking CSEC early. To my surprise, they agreed. From this point, I left it all up to faith. I knew for sure I already made the team. Despite setbacks and disappointments, I just did the work with a knowing. Morning and evening, for six days a week, I was at it, training, training, training. My faith was tested at times. At the age group trials earlier this year, I fell short and missed the required qualifying time by one second. For what I thought was my best chance of making the team. I pressed on and continued to train hard as I was sure of what I hoped for. I'm happy and excited to report that I'll be leaving for Barbados this Wednesday to represent Jamaica. Wow. Thanks for championship. This experience has taught me that faith is an everyday activity. In my example, I had faith in myself and worked towards my goal. The energy in and around us, some call it God, works at our level of consciousness. Therefore, whatever you put in your mind, it will become a reality. Positive thoughts cause positive things to happen. Likewise, faith causes things to become a reality. Thank you. Morning, everyone. Morning. I'll be doing a reading on faith. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, unquote. Faith is having hope. I have faith that I'll wake up every day and see the sun, feel the air, and be a part of nature. I have faith that I'll wake up and the house remains the same. <laughs> I have faith that I'll get good grades in school and learn something new each day. I have faith that I'll do extremely good in basketball too. Yes. Faith is believing. In order to have faith, you must have a conviction that all is well. In order to keep faith, 
we must allow nothing to enter our thought which will weaken this conviction. In my conviction, in my conviction that I will get good grades, I learn, I learn something new each day, I prepare myself to work harder each day. I do the work that is needed or else I will not be prepared. While we believe and have faith, I must also do the work that will nurture and feed my conviction. Let us affirm, I believe and have faith that I will do the work that nurtures my conviction. I Together, faith is knowing. Have you ever been lost traveling to a friend's house and you coming up to an intersection, you have a choice to turn left or right? There is something inside you that tells you to make a turn, your instinct maybe. You follow your instinct without questioning the choice to make the turn, and as faith would have it, you get to your friend's house. There was something inside you that made you know that you made the right choice. That's our faith in action. Faith is the removal of fear and confusion. Fear and confusion makes us flustered. We become frustrated, doubtful, and stop believing. Faith is not fearful. We embrace the unknown, knowing that all is well. I know I will be a great basketball player. Watch out for me now. <laughs> I will not allow myself to be confused about how many times I lose a game. Losing gives me the confidence to make the next game my winning game. I have faith, believing and knowing it will be so. The great basketball player Michael Jordan said, I have missed 9,000 shots in my career. I have lost almost 300 games. I have failed over and over and over again in my life. That is why I succeed." Unquote. Let us continue to practice believing and knowing that our faith guides us on the right path each day, just as we know that the sun will rise every morning. Thank you. Hi, good morning. It's odd to see me here in this capacity. <laughs> OK. In order to have faith, we must have a conviction that all is well. In order to keep faith, we must allow nothing to enter or thought which will weaken this conviction. Faith is built up from belief, acceptance, and trust. Whenever anything enters our thought which destroys, in any degree, one of these attitudes, to that extent, faith is weakened. Our mind must be steady in its conviction that our life is some part of God and that the Spirit is incarnated in us. Affirmations and denials are for the purpose of vitalizing faith, for the purpose of converting thought to a belief in things spiritual. The foundation for correct mental treatment is perfect God, perfect person, and perfect being. Thought must be organized to fit this premise, and conclusions must be built on this premise. We must keep, we must keep our faith vital if we hope to successfully treat for ourselves or for others. And that was by Ernest Holmes, author of Science of Mind. A couple years ago, my phone was stolen from me on my way to a friend's house. I'll spare the details of the incident, but immediately after, I recall being very upset. Now, I'm sure, Miss Tomlin, you can relate to that. <laughs> you know, when somebody takes something from you, it, it's, it's hurtful because they don't deserve it and they took it from you. You know, but for whatever reason, they took it. The day prior to the incident, I had refurbished the phone, and I was ready to sell it in order to purchase a new one. So then again, you can really understand why I was even more upset. I clearly remembered saying out aloud, I'm going to get back that phone. 
Hello, high water, I am getting back that phone. I had recently started att attending the temple at that point in time, and it wasn't until after making that statement did I remember the few teachings that I had gathered. I said to myself, all right, there's nothing you can do about this while you're angry. So we all know that part in the treatment where we say, I release these words, right? And that's exactly what I did at that point in time. I got to my friend's house and then I made an attempt to calm myself. I borrowed his phone and I placed a call to Digicel and I had asked them to bar incoming and outgoing calls. Against the naysayers who believe that, you know, going to the police would not get me anywhere. Your phone gone, you now get it back. All right, cool, no problem. Now, this incident happened on a Sunday. Like, can you believe on a big Sunday somebody goes stop and rob me? <laughs> and you know, I actually told him not to say, are you going to rob me on a Sunday? But, yeah. I recall getting a replacement sim on the Tuesday, and a friend of mine was kind enough to loan me his spare. When I placed the sim into the phone, I received some messages that were from a particular number to say, attempting to send credit from my phone to theirs. I called the number, a lady answered, and I explained my situation. No, she apparently got the SIM from the person who stole the phone. So she was the one sending credit, I assume, but the person that stole the phone actually worked there with her. But the long and short of it all was that the next day, the Wednesday, I was able to get, the, with the help of that lady, I was able to get the police involved and we caught the man who got the phone, who saw the phone. And this man was from Clarendon. This, they were in Clarendon. So from Kingston to Clarendon, he came from Clarendon to Kingston for whatever reason. For my phone. No, for his phone. The owner took it back. <laughs> there were so many things that I could have done differently in that situation. I could have deleted those messages and treated them as junk. I could have not trusted the word of the lady. I did not need to believe what she was saying or accept her word as the truth. However, I already claimed and had the utmost faith that I, would, uh, that I was going to get back my phone. So I knew within my heart that God was working with me, in me, and through me. We must have faith in ourselves. No one can have faith for us. No one can trust for us. No one can cause us to accept anything we can't trust. If not, we will have no faith or confidence in anything that we do. Faith is something that we have to exercise. If you exercise distrust, you immediately start closing yourself off to endless possibilities and ideas. Repeating statements such as, I can't do this and it's not possible, generates negativity and will make believing of any sort impossible. Sometimes some of the things we want to accomplish may not be within our, within our reach in the now, but the beauty of faith is that it will allow us to have it at a time that is now. That is when the time is right. In the meantime, we can work towards achieving that goal. After all, we can't win the lottery if we have never purchased a ticket. <laughs> now, when, nervousness speaking, I can't even remember your name. Um, when I was approached, let's put it that way, <laughs> in doing this talk, I thought, I was being asked to sing. So I was like, yeah man, sure, no problem, fine. And then he was like, well, it's good, it's good you know, because I'm sure they'd want to hear you speak. I said, what? S speak? I, I get very nervous coming up here and singing. This is even worse. <laughs> so I think I've exercised enough faith today. <laughs> so,
<laughs> All right. So I'll end with this quote by Ernest Holmes. I live in faith that there is a presence and power greater than I am that nurtures and supports me in ways I could not even imagine. I know that this presence is all-knowing and all power and is always right where I am. Namaste. I thank all four speakers for inspiring us to take that leap into faith. We will now have our love offering and the joy song is